Welcome to this week's Money Week video. And this week I want to deal with a topic that a few people have asked about. It's a pretty big meaty topic. It is how do you value a company? Now obviously that's something that predators want to do before they take over a target, to use takeover language. And it's something that investors should have an interest in. Um, when you're buying a share you want to be looking at, you know, am I getting good value for money or not? Uh, and how do I think about the value of a company? Well, to cut to the chase, how do you think about the value of any asset? Take a house, for example. Arguably, there are three ways you can decide whether or not to buy a property. You could do a sort of bottom-up estimation of what it would cost to buy the land and build the thing. That would give you a number. Okay? You could look at the price of houses nearby. They won't be identical, but that will give you some feel for the one you're looking at. Or you could say, actually, maybe a property is only worth what someone's prepared to pay to live in it. So you could sort of do a calculation of all the future rent that the asset might generate and then bring it back into today's money terms using a technique I've covered in another video called discounting. All right? So you sort of got bottom up, bricks and mortar approach, the house next door approach, and the value from a rental perspective approach. Now those won't all necessarily give you the same number. They'll give you a range, okay? And then as the buyer, you negotiate the lowest price possible. As a seller, you obviously negotiate the highest price possible. Well, what's that got to do with today's topic? Companies can be valued using a sort of similar three-pronged approach, if you like. So in this video, all I'm gonna do is outline those three approaches, and then maybe in future videos, if there's demand out there, I can take that on a stage further. So, how do you do it? All right? Well, fundamentally, it's an art rather than a science. All right? There are numbers involved, but at the end of the day, a company like a house is only worth what someone's prepared to pay for it, and they'll want to pay as little as possible. If you're the seller, you'll want to get as much as possible. So the idea is to establish a range, okay? so a range to get the negotiation going in, and then obviously sellers look to achieve the top end of the range, and buyers look to achieve the bottom end of the range. But how's it work? Well, three approaches. Remember what I said about the house just now. All right. Well, I was a little bit um, loose and fast with the facts, but those three approaches I described also describe the way that you can go about valuing an entire company. Okay. One of them is what's called the asset-based approach. Now in this video, I'm just going to introduce the language. I'm not going to go into this in any detail. But essentially, you could take a company's balance sheet as a starting point. If you're not sure what on earth a balance sheet is, see my video. It's a popular one. What is a balance sheet? Okay. You could start with the company's balance sheet, look at the list of assets, make some adjustments according to, as a buyer, whether you think they're fairly safe or not, and come up with a kind of asset-based valuation. But do you just stop there? No, okay, because chances are you're not buying the company to simply wind it up and flog off the assets. Chances are you're buying it, okay, as a predator, for example, or as an investor, you're looking at the longer term. So you're looking at what you can squeeze out of it. So another approach would be the house next door approach. Okay, this is the kind of bricks and mortar approach. The house next door is called, oh, well, I'll call it um, ratio-based. And if there's demand, we can cover these in other videos. Okay, you may have come across this one if you've done a bit of this stuff before. But ratio-based is essentially saying, well, let's take similar companies, so ones from the sector that this company uh, operates in. Let's look at something like their PE ratio or their price-to-sales ratio. Again, topics I cover in other videos. What is a PE ratio? What is a price-to-sales ratio? Okay, and let's see if we can come up with a sort of comparative number for the company that we're looking at, all right? Um, now, very, very simply, very, very simply, this works on this sort of premise, you know, that a PE ratio is the relationship, for example, between the current share price of a company and one year's earnings, all right? So, um, you know, if you've got sort of, let's say, a, a PE ratio of 10, okay, you can, rearrange this formula, if you like a bit of maths, and say, 
well, the value of a firm is equal to, just multiplying that out, 10 times earnings. All right, if you're into maths, you can do a bit of a rearrangement. Okay, so P is equal to 10 times earnings. So what you can start to then do is say, well, you know, if I can come up with the right earnings figure, and if I think that 10 is about the right multiple to apply to the firm I'm looking at, based on other similar companies, I can start to come up with a value for P. That was a little bit quick and dirty, but you sort of may get the basic idea from there. Okay, and the third and biggest and chunkiest method okay, is what's called discounted cash flow, DCF. That's the kind of what's a property worth looking at its rental income in the future type approach. Okay, I'm not going to cover that in this video, could do an entire video on that quite comfortably. But that's the idea that what you actually want to do is to forecast the earnings and cash flows that the company will generate looking into the future and then bring them back to today's money using what's called a discount rate, okay? And uh, I do cover that in um, another video in, in outline terms, okay? So there we have it. Just want to introduce the idea, that's all I've done here, that there are several ways you can value a company, and there's a predator, obviously that's vital, in okay, case so you don't overpay for it. As an investor, it's quite important too, okay? So those three methods are asset-based, bottom up, take a balance sheet, see what the company's worth from a balance sheet point of view, make some adjustments based on what you think assets and liabilities might really be worth. The ratio-based approach that says, let's look at similar companies, get a handle on a typical multiple for the sector, and then take a number for the company we're looking at and multiply to get the price. That can be done using the P ratio, the price to sales ratio, it depends on the company, depends on the sector. And the third approach, which is a biggie, discounted cash flow. Okay, and that's used in many, many, many situations. Okay, it's unusual to just do one of these. Quite often you're trying to do two or three of them. DCF's the hardest, involves the most amount of work, projecting cash flows into the future, discounting them back to get a price or a value today. All right, and then armed with those different numbers, because these could easily throw out three different numbers, hopefully not totally divergent, you then begin, if you're buying a company, the negotiation on what you're actually going to pay based on the range that these three techniques have just generated. Hope that's been useful. See you in the next video.